Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Terry Kuster and today we discuss polymer blends as a way to optimize the material solution in your polymer material selection journey. Okay, let us get started with some definitions. So what are polymer blends? Uh, usually we have the, they are a mixture of two or more polymers to create uh, a new material with a single phase or a two-phase system. This is what you can see here. So we have polymer A, we have polymer B, they get mixed together and uh, create a single phase system. So this is the case where uh, blending um, is, is possible. And uh, when we have uh, polymer A and B, when, they, when it is not possible to mix them, you need also a compatibilizer uh, to create a blend and then you have a two-phase system. So you can see that also in the TSC where you have them uh, two uh, glass transition temperature, whereas in the one-phase system you have only uh, one glass transition. Okay, why are polymer blends useful? So. On the one hand, when you look at the fulfill fulfillment of product requirements, so most proper most polymers uh, show a lack in, in some of the properties, like for example, low flexibility, transparency is missing, low density, uh, which uh, are needed for the application. And by blending of polymers, you can achieve such required properties and even uh, lower the material costs. And here are now some uh, examples of blends. So a famous one is polycarbonate with ABS, so PCABS. Then we can blend uh, polycarbonate with, uh, with polyester, like a PPT. Then we can blend, for example, high performance polymer such as PPS with a polyamide. And also uh, here's an example where we blend three different materials, PPE, polystyrene and the polyamide. And however, you can also um, blend a polyamide with a polyphetalamide with a high performance polyamide to achieve a better heat uh, resistance and also when you look for material, for example, metal replacements where the aliphatic nylon is not enough anymore, then you can go to such a blend where you have already semi-aromatic polyamide. Okay, let's have a look at uh, PCABS as a blend. So when you look at, for example, impact performance of polycarbonate, we have uh, this shown in this graph here, where we have the energy versus the temperature, and the green curve represents the polycarbonate. And so we have here at lower temperature more uh, brittle behavior, and uh, then at the higher temperature more the ductile behavior. Whereas when you look at ABS, it's the yellow curve, we have. Um, more or less the same behavior at lower temperature, whereas as also as room and higher temperature. And now uh, we want to create a material which combines both words so that we have at higher temperature a good um, uh, um, uh, more a tactile behavior and uh, at also to avoid brittle behavior in the low temperature range and this is done by blending those two materials which you can see here now in the violet curve where we have um, a similar behavior at low and at higher temperature so this is uh, we have this requirement um, and to not have sudden jumps in, in behavior this can be done with such a combination then another example is PCPPT. So here you can use the toughness and stability of polycarbonate and by blending with PPT we 
we get a solvent resistant. So polycarbonate has there a downside of, of the chemical resistance, but however, by mixing with um, PPT, this can be removed. So you create then a product which has a good heat uh, resistance, a good chemical and impact resistance. And this makes it suitable for applications, for example, in the uh, automotive area uh, where you need chemical resistance, however, also the impact uh, resistance. And here is an example of PC and PC PPT that the uh, impact behavior at higher temperature can be uh, uh, improved with such a, a blend together with the solvent resistant. Another example is the mixing uh, PPS and uh, polyamide. So polyamides are widely used as engineering uh, polymer. So we have outstanding combination of properties such as low density, easy processing, good strength and solvent resistance. However, the downside is the lower heat distortion temperature and also the amide groups in the backbone lead to an easy absorption of water, uh, which then lower the mechanical properties and also influences the dimensional stability. PPS on the other side has outstanding high temperature resistance combined with good mechanical properties, chemical and solvent resistance, as well as high dimension stability. And also the processing is easy. However, it has a low elongation break, uh, has higher costs and is rather brittle material. So what we can do now here to improve this adverse effect, blending both materials, and you receive then a polymer alloy with outstanding properties such as a low, low flash uh, PPS. You have excellent mechanical strength, toughness, rigidity, and also uh, uh, in terms of the processing, as mentioned, low flash uh, properties, excellent flow for thin walls, and fast cycle time. So for this. Uh, uh, Alloy you can use then a mold which uses water heating instead of oil heating. Whereas for PPS you need a minimum of 135 degrees C in 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 the mold uh, during processing. And with such a blend you can uh, fulfill certain product requirements which are needed. Okay, if you want. To have more information on polymer engineering topics, I highly recommend you on my blog findoutaboutplastics.com as well as on material selection, my online courses. I will link you both my blog and the uh, online courses in the description below. Okay, which video to watch next? In this video, I discussed the importance of graphical data for optimal polymer material selection. So check it out. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Till next time, bye.